I was just wondering um, how much you're enjoying being back um, on the training pitch. Obviously, we're now back full contact. Can you tell us a wee bit about what that's been like? And secondly, I wanted to ask you a wee bit about how much do you enjoy um, being on the training pitch daily, working with talents like Ryan Kane and Yanis Hadji and trying to harness that and, and bring out the best of them consistently? Do you consider that to be uh, one of your favourite parts of training and, and, and part of your job? No, absolutely. When you're talking about the, those sort of individuals, Stephen, it's, it, is, it is a pleasure. You know, and it, obviously you're talking about two or three offensive players there, so they sort of suit my eye a little bit more than looking at guys that, that played in the defensive side of the pitch. So trying to just pass on any little bits of advice about looking forward, looking to be positive, looking to try to get shots at goal, that's something I'm always obviously encouraged by the manager to try and impose on the certainly the forward-thinking players, but also... Even the defensive guys, you know, being positive in their thinking, looking forward rather than playing safe and square, you know, looking looking up to the next line. So defenders looking into midfield, maybe even bypassing that, looking at the forwards. But as you say, the Kents, Aribos, the uh, Hadjis, Barkers, oh, Stuarts, Jones, we've got, we've got quite an array of talent there. So just trying to pass on little bits, but mainly, mainly for players to be positive and on the front foot and looking forward. Gary, how's it been being back at training? Obviously, these different measures in place. Are you really getting to have a look at the players and what you maybe need to add to the squad? Yeah, well, the thing is, you know, when we go right back to the start of the lockdown, you know, obviously it was we were monitoring all the training on GPS, and obviously the players had all individual programs, so keep get we were getting the results from their sports science guys about how these how the players are coping during the lockdown, which is, which is very difficult to keep yourself self-motivated, but they, they kept having to hit numbers, you know, and, and reach the distances which, which the sports ga science guys put on them. And then obviously coming back, when we were introduced back to training, we were, we were working in small pods, you know, we, we were obviously under the instruction of the government to, to be in twos and, you know, and maybe, I think it was six, eight on a one pitch. So that in itself for the coaches, you know, trying to design specific training sessions, what we basically did is we worked in the three segments of the pitch. We worked on defenders, midfielders, and then attackers. And then, obviously, in the last three or four days, when we've sort of jumped forward to, to being in, involved in, in full contact, makes it more enjoyable for, for everybody. So all of a sudden, you know, there's a spring in the step. We've been really enthused with the fact that the players have been come back really fit. So, we've, you know, we, as much as the little... Sessions were, were working in pods. We've moved on quite quickly to the to the full contact th this week. We've been impressed by the fitness of the players. So when we've moved to more ball work and more sort of movements in, in, in a shape of a, a full team, it's been the last three or four days have been excellent, actually. All right, thank you. Luke Hi Gary, um, I want to talk again uh, with Alfredo Morelos and his agent, etc. How key is it for you to nail down the fact that you want him to stay, you will stay, and that message is clear for the rest of the transfer window of the season so that probably we don't have to ask that question every week? Yeah, it's pretty repetitive, and I'm sure the manager, you know, when I come and do these, it's, it's generally a question I'm asked, but the manager gets asked a million times. What I would say, Luke, is that he's, he's part of a squad, and he's, he's no different to any other player. He's under contract here. He's obviously a Rangers player, and, and at this moment in time, he's been treated the exact same as everybody else. We are trying to get people up to match speed, up to the speed where we can start the season on, on the 1st of August. So it's that's and, and, and that's it. You know, he's he's no different. He's he's got to come and he's he's come back with the same attitude as everybody. He's trying to show the manager that he's that he should be part of the starting eleven, like everybody should be. And that's that's the onus we put on the players. It's very competitive. You know, we've got, we've got quite a big squad. So even this in this early stage, you've got to be catching the eye of the manager. Thanks, Gary. Uh, Ali Defoe, go ahead. Hi, Ari. Um, just a quick one. During these unprecedented times, I guess it must be quite difficult on the players' sort of mental health yeah. as well as their physical health. How do Rangers, uh, how have you been coping and, and helping? Do you know what? That's a, that, that's a good question because obviously that everybody's always, you know, you look such a long time away, uh, everybody's sort of thinking that people's fitness will fall away. But 
we were very keen to stay in touch with the players and, and loads of Zoom meetings and loads of meetings in little compartments. And it, as you rightly say, we were actually trying to see if there was a change in anybody's sort of look or demeanour to maybe suggest that mentally, obviously it's tough, it's tough for everybody. It's tough for everybody in any walk of life. So that was something we were very much aware of, especially younger players as well. And also then you look at players with kids who are not, the kids obviously not going to school, you know, and, and having to deal with homeschooling. And so basically making sure we kept in touch with most players to, just to make sure that that mental, the, the welfare of the players is, is very important to us here. You know, and so that was something we were keen to actually just see with our eyes, you know, doing things like this. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, David Edgar, please. Gary, how important is this summer for some of what might be considered the fringe players, um, guys who maybe didn't get as much first team time as they wanted last, last season? You alluded to the Ronaldo, is there a chance for these guys to maybe reignite their career this summer by, by really going the extra well, training? Yeah, you would, I would say, you know, I would, I would, you know, and, and this was something that was put to these players, you know, players that so-called fringe players, guys that are maybe just on the edges, and it's, it was probably a, might a good time, a good you know, as far as the lockdown was difficult and, and hard for everybody, but for for some, for those guys in particular, maybe it's a good chance for them to go away and analyse and reflect a wee bit and just go, maybe I need to step it up, maybe I need to get better at that. Maybe during this period I can use it to my benefit to, to become fitter, stronger, mentally better prepared. So these are these are things, and, and in general, we've got 16, 18 guys coming back looking hungry. Thanks, Gary. Uh, Gabriel, go ahead. Hi, Gary. Hi, Gabriel. Um, it should come out on Monday yes. for the league season. How important is it to, to get a good start in the league season? But I also wanted to ask you about the Europa League, which, of course, you might be playing with uh, in August. How do you manage to, to split almost focusing on the league, but you also got such an important game to start doing the season? No, absolutely. You know, I think it's, it's something... Uh, you look forward to, you know, when I was a player, I always look forward to the day that the, the fixtures come out. So Monday's a big day for all the guys to, to get a look at how the season's going to look. Listen, we know how key it is to start a season well. You know, it's the, the, the facts are, for us, we, we've, we've got to try and, and get a fast start, a good start, and dropping points is, is, is make, can make things very difficult. So we're, we're looking for a real fast start, but that's why we'll be, we're, we've been back quite a while now, um, it seems. Um, we've got to be prepared. We had that that fixture, the 6th of August, that's been pencilled in for quite a while, so that has been a game that we've been building towards. Uh, you know, the, the, the result obviously puts Bayer Leverkusen big favourites, but you never know. You never know. What the, you know, there was enough in some of the Bundesliga games that I watch, you know, that Leverkusen have got some talented footballers. That are, that are, no doubt they're a good side. But we think we can create chances. And the first goal in that game is going to make it pretty key, I think. Thanks, Gary. Uh, Sheila? Hi, Gary. How are you doing? Hi, Sheila. Um, just a, a quick one there on, uh, can you clarify, has there been any concrete bits for Alfredo as yet? And, and secondly, in terms of this season, what have you learned over the past two seasons that you can really build on and push through? And really, is, is there no margin for any of this season? As far as bids, I'm unaware, you know, and it's it's the, the question has been asked along loads of times. It's like I think it's like bids concerning any footballer, any football club, you know, that every player's got a price, you know, and, until the moments where a bid lands where the club think it's you know a number that suits, you know, it, 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 we just keep moving on. You now Fred has just got to keep focused and, and get fit for those early games in the season. As far as, as as far as what we've learned going over the, the the last couple of seasons, we just need to keep improving. We just need to keep improving and getting better. Thanks, Gary. Uh, David Tanner, uh, last question for Gary. Gary, good to see you. Good to see you. Forgive me if this is a bit incestuous. It's a question from the breakfast show, guys, at Talks <laughs> Four. Do you want to know your favourite memories of uh, playing with? Uh, I want to add the pitch of McCoy's, if you don't mind. Sure. Listen, Ali and I go back quite a long way. We probably spent, this is incestuous, uh, we, were, we were room partners for, for quite, a, quite a long time during our period as, as uh, 
Scotland teammates. But one of the fondest things, I think one of the fondest things when I actually played against them in the Battle of Britain at Ibrox. And I was lucky enough to score inside a minute. I think it was 55 seconds from the edge of the box. And as that ball hit the back of the net, there was obviously no away fans. There was, this, there was a most deadly science, silence. And I, as I was running back towards the centre circle to, to, to re-centre, I ran past Coist and I said, that wasn't a bad strike, wee man, was it? And he went, I was supposed to be picking you up. But fast forward a week, a couple of weeks in Ellen Road, and then he scores that diving header. And obviously he gave me the same running back. What about that for a goal? And, and obviously Rangers went through. So that was, that's a wee fun story, you know, just teasing him. Um, but he had the last laugh. And is it true that he stole your toothbrush? By the way, he stole everything. He turned up with nothing. Underpants, toothbrushes, shaving foam, razors, socks. He occasionally he turned up with boots. <laughs> Hi John, it's David Tanner here. I hope you can hear me okay. Yeah, all good. Good stuff. Tell me, uh, are you coming here as backup or do you intend to force your way into the team? I, uh, I certainly hope that I'm not coming just to uh, to, to fill a space on the bench. Um, of course, this is you know this is a massive football club. Um, they've got a very good squad of players. Got a fantastic goalkeeper in Gregsy, and um, you know I just want to to come and be part of that squad, of that group, trying to uh, to, to push it forward, as Gary said, and uh, and improve the overall squad, uh, and be ready when when called upon, uh, and hopefully. Um, that can be sooner rather than later, but you know I, I understand the, the situation of what I'm coming into uh, and the task ahead, um, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to that challenge because uh, you know if I can come and make that work, then it would be a, an, an incredible uh, sort of journey to be part of. Thanks, John. Uh, Sheila. Hi, John. Obviously, you've been in and around the Scotland squad for a while. How important is it for you to still be part of that? And, and to do that, you obviously need to be playing. Yeah, again, so following on from the previous question, that was uh, obviously in, in our thinking when we when we took the the decision to make this move, and and hopefully shows that my intentions are clear that uh, that I want to come, uh, and I and I want to be uh, you know a, a valuable member of the squad and contributing regularly, um, and, and all of that hopefully will will only strengthen um, that cause uh, going forward with the national team, uh, and again, um, it's. Uh, it's a real privilege to be part of that uh, and sort of been involved in that group going forward. The playoff game's coming up uh, and beyond that, we don't know. So, um, yeah, I definitely want to continue to be involved in the national team setup. So um, from that point of view, again, um, I want to make sure that I'm giving 100 percent every day to uh, to try uh, my very best to force my, my way into into that reckoning uh, and hopefully keep keep that national uh, national team spot alive for myself. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Gabriel, go ahead. Hi, John. Um, I appreciate you've not played any games yet, but I was just wondering how does it feel to be at Rangers, and so far, what differences have you found uh, compared to other clubs you've previously been at? No, it's it's, it's great to be to be up here um, and to be back training after after a long time out um, over the break. Um, obviously, played at Ibrox a couple of times in my times with Hearts, and and really enjoyed the atmosphere and. And the feel of the club um, was was a real eye opener to, to the size of of the place and uh, and the club itself. So uh, no, it's great to be here and part of that. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just obviously looking forward to, to hopefully the the pre season games and that coming around quickly, um, getting back into some uh, into some sort of proper competitive stuff, uh, and just looking forward to that. Thanks, John. Uh, do you please? John, when you join a club like Rangers who have an established and recognised number one, what do the management team say to you coming in? Do they set you that challenge or is it a case of saying you'll need to start as number two and work your way up or do they say the shots there, go and get it? I think it's uh, you know when we when I had the the initial meetings with the with the gaffer uh, and and with the club it was a case of they want to they want to have serious competition uh, in all positions on the pitch and if you're going to compete if you're going to be at the very top uh, good clubs uh, at all levels have that throughout um, they don't have people that are just along for the ride or just filling up a, a space on the bench or in the squad um, you can't have that you can't carry those people anymore. If you want to be competitive uh, at a serious level, so 
Um, you know, I, I, I hope that, that they, were, they were true in what they said and what the manager said, that he wants me to come uh, and, and to compete for that shirt. But of course, you, you understand completely the way that it works and, and that, you know, Griggs, he's been doing fantastically, that, that he's earned that position by right and that he has that um, and that you have to just come and do everything you can to not, to not to take that away from them, but to make sure that the manager at least sees you as, as someone who can fill that space when needed, uh, whenever that is, um, and, and just be ready to, to contribute uh, you know, as soon as you're asked to. Uh, Ali, go ahead. Hi there. Hi. Um, just a quick one. After leaving Hearts back at the end of the 2018 season, had you made any plans to come back to Scotland? Had the Rangers been in your sights, or has it just turned out that way? No, there was there was no firm plans to uh, to, to to come back. Um, of course, I'm I'm delighted that it has happened. Um, but you know, being at a club like Hearts and having a having a good season there, uh, thoroughly enjoying my time and uh, up here in Scottish football. It was certainly something that we hadn't said that we would never want to come back. That was, you know, the complete opposite, um, and, that, and that's why we're delighted to be back. But at the time, um, no, there was no, uh, there was no sort of thought in my mind of, uh, you know, of, of coming back to, to join, you know, a club of this size. Um, so I'm delighted that being able to go to Sunderland has, has allowed me to, to hopefully, you know, uh, sort of impress um, the people at this club enough. Uh, to, to feel comfortable and, and confident that I could be of value to come back and, and play for this club now. Thank you very much. Best awesome. of luck. Cheers. Thanks, John. Uh, Luke Shelley, go ahead. Thanks, John. Um, you were talking there about wanting to push Alan McGregor and try and get that number one spot. I think it's been 10 years since you last were not a regular goalkeeper back in your Bradford days or early Bradford days. How mentally do you have to be prepared for potentially having to be patient and then taking a chance when you get it? Yeah, it's a uh, it's 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 a difficult um, sort of situation. Um, it's not something that I'm I'm used to now um, since I've sort of moved into the the, the more senior part of my career. Um, I've always been someone who's been playing regularly, but I've never had the attitude that 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 was my right, um, that that I was just going to play or that I was just the number one. Um, and it was always a case of of constantly having to keep your levels at. Uh, at the very very highest standard to, to make sure that you continue to earn that place. Um, and I've had a little bit of, of obviously that um, experience with the national team, um, going away and, and playing sort of a more supportive role to, to, to Griggsy, to Gordon, to Marshy. Um, and again, uh, using that as a sort of as something to work towards as a goal, to, to push, to work with people like that. Um, and that's one of the things I'm looking forward to uh, massively is, is getting out there and training day in day out day out with 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 Griggsy and 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 sort of matching that level uh, of goalkeeper um, and hopefully that's going to make me a better goalkeeper in time um, and again it's yeah it's it's something that you have to get used to um, but you just have to continue to focus on that end goal uh, of what you want to achieve and and be ready when when called upon it's 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 long seasons there's lots of games um, and if you get your opportunity be ready to take it Thanks, John. Alison, go ahead. Hi, John. I had a bit training on the Zoom a week or so ago, but how much do you sense among the squad and the players the magnitude of the season ahead for Rangers in terms of trying to, to win that title and stop Celtic winning that team? Yeah, of course. That's that's always going to be in the in the forefront of everyone's minds. It's uh, No one's going to let you forget that. Um, and, and there's a genuine belief amongst the players that it's possible, which is good to see. And uh, I think the the last couple of seasons, the progress that's been made, the, the closing of the gap um, and, and the way that last season uh, finished was cut short, um, the, 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 there was definitely still a point to prove there. And, um, and that's, you know, part of, again, uh, part of the excitement of coming here and joining this club and, and wanting to be part of something um, that could be fantastic to, to turn that tide and, um, you know, yeah, the players have definitely got that, that belief uh, that you can see. Um, that, that, that they can go out and achieve something this year. So it's great to be to be part of that and, and to see them so focused on on that end goal. Thanks, John. Stephen Clifford. Hi, John. Um, Hi. First of all, can you tell us how much you you kind of enjoyed your, your first period at the club? Um, and say, what kind of goalkeeper are you? What can you tell the fans about your attributes and your strength as a goalkeeper? And what can we expect as fans to see from you? 
Um, it, firstly, it's been yeah, it's been great to be up here. It's uh, it's, it's obviously a, a very impressive uh, you know sort of surroundings to uh, to come and, and work in at the training ground, and, and obviously when we get to the stadium as well. Um, all the guys have been have been great, very welcoming to me. So it's been great to be out there on the on the pitch with them, um, and just back playing football, uh, back on the training pitch, and, and, and getting the work done, which has been great. Uh, the second part of the question. Um, hopefully, I think I've I've sort of over the years built a built a reputation for being for being quite a, a consistent performer, um, someone who who can be a calming influence to uh, to a defence in front of them and to a team who who can give them that trust um, to rely on them behind them to do their job and and just try and go about your business without causing too much um, too much sort of uh, too many headaches for the manager. You know, I think uh, a lot of managers are like a goalkeeper that just gets on with their business, can be relied upon, can be trusted. Um, and when the when the big moments come uh, in those sort of high pressure uh, environments, that they can they can be trusted uh, and that they can do the job for the team um, and be there um, when needed to contribute. And uh, I'm not a goalkeeper that that is desperate for the limelight or is going to go looking for work or wants it to be all about them. But I'm, I just hope that I can be the kind that when he's, when he's called upon can make sure that they, they're at the level to contribute and, and be value to the team. Thanks, John. And Thanks. last but not least, David Connor, go ahead. I've been already. I'm very good. <laughs> um, John, I'll, I'll take a sneaky extra one in that case. Um, Tell, tell me uh, about your, your experience in Sunderland. How do you compare the, the setup in Sunderland to what you're experiencing now at Rangers? Um, there's there's a f some similarities in the in, in, in the case of how the uh, how the sort of day to day is set up with the, the training ground. Obviously, the the club is a massive club. The stadium, the training ground is all very state of the art. So the the surroundings that you work within is is fantastic. There's there's obviously some similarities as well that it's a it's a true sort of football city. Um, what it means to the, to the people, um, just when you're out on the streets, and and every single person um, will will want to stop you and, and and talk about the club and the team and and what's going on. Um, so it gives you a it gives you certainly a taste of of what it's going to be like up here, uh, in terms of being under that microscope a little bit, um, and uh, and having to really buy into. To to what you're representing, and that it's an entire you know that it's a the, the, the club has has a huge following. Um, and, and that everyone um, wants the best for you, but will certainly let you know uh, if you're not giving the best. Um, and uh, and yes, yeah, there's there's definitely parallels. Um, I'm under no illusions of of that sort of uh, the, the step up in terms of how much of a, um, a a rivalry there is in the city, and 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 just how much expectation there is from the fans. Um, but in terms of uh, yeah, giving you a sort of uh, a bedding in, if you like, of what you're going to come and face. Being at Sunderland was certainly another massive club with a huge fan base that had serious expectations, um, you know, from from the players and, and from everyone involved. So, from that point of view, yeah, there's there's quite a few um, similarities that hopefully will uh, will stand me in good stead going forward here.